Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. Well, just wanted to get this video out and let you all know that I'm not just sitting around here uh, fishing or goofing off. I've been working really hard this week. We've done a lot of work. Uh, website, these are just some of the pictures that I've taken that uh, are currently being entered into the website for the uh, various parts. And I've also been working, and I'll show you a little clip here. I'm taking all of the parts, finding out a single part, how much uh, material and how much time it takes to print one single part. Then I roughly look at my printer and see how many I can print to produce a quantity that can be run in either 12 hours or 24 hours or 36 hours and so forth. And of course this one's running in 34 hours in 45 minutes, approximately 35 hours. So it will probably finish about an hour before I go down to um, restart the printers and uh, take the ones that have finished and remove the parts and so forth. Okay. So that's, that's what we've been doing with uh, all of our parts. We have approximately 30 parts that I'm uh, having to do this with and generating a G-code file for a single part um, with BRIM, uh, with multiple parts in the run configuration with BRIM, and also run configuration without brim. If adhesion's going good and they're running good without brim, that's fine. But it you can tell it doesn't take that much more material uh, in running this particular job. It um, the difference is about one just a little bit over one meter. No, a little bit less than a meter. So there's a little bit less than a meter of material used in the brim. So um, that's something to consider, but it also saves us some time, but it doesn't save me that much time because the job's just finishing earlier and it's sitting there waiting for me a little bit longer. We're looking at every part that we're printing, over 30 parts now, and configuring them for specific printers and considering the print time so that we can configure the print jobs to run in the uh, incremented 12-hour segments that we're shooting for. So that means basically that we're wanting to have... Um, have these things set up so that they'll run in either 12, 24, 36, 48 hours, and so forth. Now, you can't always get what you want. So sometimes a print job, just the way it's configured, will uh, quit running ahead of schedule. And it may sit there for a couple of hours uh, before I go down to service. And the whole idea of the print farm with me doing everything myself is not to have to go down there every few minutes and check on things. And um, we, I've done videos on how I was going to monitor it using uh, cameras and Wi-Fi and internet. And that is being done now. We've got all of the, we've got cameras set up. We have them where I can monitor them on my phone and I'll be showing you a little bit more on that as we go into some detail on some of the things that have been completed down at the new print farm now. The whole purpose of a print farm is to help someone uh, manufacture or make large quantities of parts in a short period of time. A lot of people were asking me, um, do you have a lot of inventories and stuff? And yes, we've produced a lot of uh, prototype parts 
and those have evolved into finished parts, but we weren't building tremendous inventories because we were constantly tweaking and improving the parts. Even though they worked perfectly well, there was some aesthetic thing we could do to them to make them better. The whole concept that I'm looking for is being able to have this print farm support my sales so that I don't have to have a lot of inventory. Right now, I've done calculations. I've been going through on every single part and figuring exactly how much filament is required for it, how long, how many hours and minutes it takes to run. Um, I've configured them so that um, some parts, uh, I'll run uh, 27 parts at one time on a printer. Uh, some of them are 15, 22, just all kinds of different configurations. But basically, looking at my overall production schedule that I expect once our sales start next, next month, um, I will have the capability of producing 650 to 700 parts in a 12-hour shift uh, at the new print farm. And that equates to about 9,100 to 9,800 parts every week. So that's a pretty substantial um, uh, capability uh, for a little uh, one-man print farm. Uh, and you've seen it's been one man that's done all the work setting it up and everything. And now as uh, different phases of it are being completed, these uh, production figures that I have are realistic because I've done tests and so forth. And one thing that I'm going to mention, I'll, I'll save it for another video, but I'm going to have another video coming out pretty soon. I've had several problems with filament and different things and I've done videos on them and everything. So anyone thinking about setting up a print farm, a small print farm at home with, let's say, five or more printers, you're going to run into a lot of the same problems that I'm running into and that I have run into at my print farm. So you're going to definitely want to stay tuned because I haven't actually seen or heard of anything like this on the market yet, but I've come up with a solution that solves a lot of problems uh, pertaining to filament and uh, printing at a print farm. Uh, it's not going to help be very beneficial to someone running one or two printers, but... Um, won't be beneficial at all. Well, no, I take that back. Uh, it could be beneficial to uh, people running one or two printers, uh, especially if they're running them uh, on long print jobs 24 hours or more. But anyway, back to uh, the other stuff here. The website, getting things loaded. We've, um, I did a little short video over here where I've been using these scales to weigh every single part and getting the dimensions and measurements and everything for all of the parts. I've had to do that for the website for calculating shipping and so forth. We're taking our scales here and we're having to weigh every part. And this is for our catalog our website so we put each part on there and we check the weight this one is 0.055 pounds or 0.025 kilograms so we'll put that record that down here and then we'll do the measurements of it and we'll actually have to take our micrometer here and um, 
Okay, looks like we're right at, okay, 5.999, uh, 60 millimeters. So we've recorded our 60 millimeters here. And then we went on to uh, check the depth and also to check the height or length of the part. And we'll take those measurements and record them. Then we'll also change them, convert them to inches. And that way we'll have, like on this first part, we'll have the part, we'll have the weight in pounds, kilograms. We'll have the measurements in millimeters and inches. And this will help us in calculating uh, shipping charges and so forth. Um, by combining all of the weights of all the different parts and uh, of course the stuff that I'm having to do uh, CAD software and I've gone through every part looked at them and reviewed them and done final tweaks on the parts cosmetic things and otherwise just wanting to make sure that I've got the best possible part that I can have and we're still coming up. I have uh, two new uh, devices for the helping hand that I'm working on now. So this is a never-ending thing. As, as new things arise and we come up with ideas, we'll be adding those. But as far as the print farm goes, it's a mathematical problem of scheduling uh, jobs, being able to figure out which printers are going to run which parts. Uh, for example, on the A-Nets, I'll run four of these base parts here. However, on the Tronic C XY2 Pros, I'll be running nine of those at a time on the Tronic C. Uh, however, right now, my Tronic C printers are all tied up, scheduled for printing uh, the larger lap diner parts. So um, I'll be using uh, some of the A-nets to keep up with inventory on the um, base units for the helping hand. Of course, I have over, I have probably a couple hundred of them already now. So we're in pretty good shape there. I've continued, even though I haven't had time to do videos, I've continued to do work with the, um, uh, the power inverters and so forth and backing up. And, and I've gotten, come to some pretty good conclusions on that. So a little later on, I'll do a brief video and just show the facts and the highlights of that stuff. I've also received a lot of other uh, parts that I've been uh, tinkering around with a little bit as far as trying to help me automate the print farm. I'll be doing a little bit of work on that too. So I just wanted to get some of this stuff on tape and get some videos out there to you. I know you guys would rather see some action than just me talking about it. You don't want to see the kind of action I'd have if I just went down there and started throwing print jobs on and running stuff. It'd be a disaster. So it's all got to be uh, strategically planned out and worked out. And I have to spend hours and hours and days and days doing uh, these kind of things so that we know our production runs are going to not only be good runs and we'll get good parts, but that we'll be getting the parts and the quantities that we need. With the print farm, the concept is not to have to have tremendous inventories, have a facility and the capability to um, adapt and keep up with demand as soon as we get the website launched, we'll start getting an idea of what that demand's going to be. If the demand coming from sales is greater than the capability that I have at this time, 
Um, I don't think it'll be a problem because that would be a good problem to have because I would be exceeding all expectations if if that happens and we'll definitely uh, scramble and find a way to address it. So thanks for uh, hanging in there and we'll be getting some more videos out to you just as soon as possible.